I'm exploring one of history's greatest subterranean mysteries. Okay, follow me down. The ancient underground cities of Cappadocia in Turkey. Incredible. Wow, wild. A network of nearly 200 elaborate cities dug entirely with hand tools thousands of years ago, and yet almost nothing is known about them. These cities have captured the modern world's imagination. Who could have built them? Everyone seems to have a theory. Some even think aliens were involved. I'm traveling deep beneath the earth in search of new clues. I'm stuck. And using brand new technology. So this is the 3D version of the whole cave here. To learn more about just who constructed these amazing cities. This is headline news in the archeological business. And what prompted an entire civilization to burrow underground. I think Cappadocia is the cradle of civilization. Unbelievable. Could the answers change everything we think we know about who was the first advanced society in the history of the world? That's amazing. To see what I can find out, I'm headed deep into the underworld of Cappadocia. Right beneath our feet, there are cities. Hidden by time, they hold the clues that could rewrite history. Into the abyss, huh? I'm Don Wildman, and my mission is to explore the farthest and deepest reaches of our planet using cutting edge technology. How cool is that? To dig into the greatest mysteries of our past. Going deep into the cities of the underworld. Cappadocia, this fabled region right in the center of Turkey. Every civilization from the Persians to the, to the Romans and beyond has laid claim to this area. It's one of these places in the ancient world where the history is layered so thick, you hardly even know where to begin. This mountainous region covers 2,000 square miles of craggy cliffs and peaks, reaching 14,000 feet in elevation. It's easy to get lost without a local guide. When you come here, what strikes you is the physical landscape. These fairy chimneys are very famous. All these volcanic deposits have been eroded away to give you these incredible rock formations. That's what's on the surface, the natural phenomenon. But below my feet is the mystery made by man. What really makes Cappadocia one of the coolest places in the world is the intricate network of underground cities beneath this moonscape. This one here is called Ozkana, and it was discovered in 1972 by a farmer who noticed the water in his field draining into a hole. When he opened it up, he found a sprawling metropolis made of stone. Look at that. This is so cool. I was here 15 years ago, when I was 15 years younger and much less wise, I'd like to think. Cappadocia was one of the first places I came when I started doing this kind of work, you know, going underground and looking at these old ancient places. It is one of the coolest of all of them, you know? It's so cool to see this again. Back then, only a number of these cities had been excavated. The working theory was that they were all dug around 3,000 years ago to serve as emergency shelters for a few thousand people. 
But since I was last here, they've uncovered more and more of these underworlds. Archaeologists now believe that there are 200 of these cities, and they're much bigger than we thought back then. Which means it's possible these spaces could have been home to an undetermined civilization of perhaps millions of people. So I'm back with some brand new tech to try and find out who this mystery society may have been. Understand this is not a cave. This whole thing used to be solid rock. This is a thick layer of volcanic ash deposited eons ago that man carved out. Only four floors of Ozganak have been explored, but archaeologists have used ground-penetrating radar to determine that there are 10 levels, extending 140 feet under the ground, which means up to 60,000 people may have lived here at any given time. These spaces are up above. When you first enter in here are, are the stables, and they've carved out these little holes which show you where the feed troughs are. But this is, you know, we're just in the first level here. It goes down and down. And as you move through this labyrinth, this maze of tunnels, you see how specific they get. Down here, this is for food storage. The entire cave system stays at a steady temperature of about 68 degrees. I can feel the cool air coming down from above. There, you can see the daylight just coming right down at me. A whole sophisticated ventilation system. There's a pretty grand design to this deal. That's what you realize. They pretty much thought of everything. Here, come this way. Down into the space. Did we just go in a circle? That's weird. I like to think I have a pretty good sense of direction, but I'm completely lost after exploring for just a few minutes. I'm seriously winded at this point. Imagine wandering the city with only a torch back when these tunnels were built. We don't know how long ago that was, but it was at least several thousand years ago. Look at this. Oh, man. Check that out. Just let me crawl down here for a little bit, see where this thing even goes. This entire system is just riddled with these tunnels. Up and down and all over the place. The effort that goes into creating these tunnels is just mammoth. I mean, just imagine trying to take this stuff out of here one basket at a time. And we're talking about miles of stuff. Endless. Absolutely endless. But really, really cool. <laughs> so amazing. How far could I go? You know, they say that this tunnel system I'm walking through here, I mean, this entire underground city, is itself connected to another underground city. Presumably connected to another one. That's the suspicion that they sort of had this ability to create this whole underground network. This might be a megalopolis of underground cities. It's a whole, you know, suburban sprawl. <laughs> The features of the underground city are impressive, especially considering they were made with hand tools. It must have taken decades or even centuries to build them. There's another tunnel that way. There's another door there, and it just continues. <laughs> but what I've always been curious about is, who built them and why? So I'm hoping this new tech can show us some new clues. I gotta map this thing out. I have this LiDAR, which I can use to get a real clear image of what these spaces look like. And maybe by looking at that map, I can get some clearer picture of who these people were. The Leica BLK360 came out this year and was invented as a tool for 3D mapping underground spaces. It combines high-res photography with LiDAR point cloud data so that you can generate an exact map of a space as you pass through it. Jeez, look at that. <laughs> you know that I love being the first one to use it down here. It gives you a whole different perspective. That's insane. By mapping with LiDAR, we can create a never-before-seen overview of this space. The idea is to identify the mysterious civilization that built these underground cities by looking at how all the design elements fit together. With the tech I've got now, I've got the ability to read this place digitally. Now I can figure out what it really looks like. Okay, so here we go. Ha, look at that. 
So this is the 3D version of the whole cave here, and we can go right inside. Oh, man, look at that. It gives me a whole overview of the engineering. So you can see the vastness of this city, how this can accommodate 60,000 people, right? Moving through this claustrophobic maze of tunnels with a 360 rig, generating a bird's eye map of the entire space, provides a perspective I'd never get by just walking through the tunnels on my own. What is that? And a single feature uncovered by this map could prove to be a major clue to the identity of this still unknown society. I've never seen something like this. High in the mountains of central Turkey sits the 2,000 square mile region called Cappadocia. And beneath this alien terrain lies a network of 200 underground cities that once housed up to 60,000 people each. They were hand carved into volcanic rock. But by who? Archaeologists have theories, but no one knows for sure. Okay, so here we go. Ah, look at that. It's incredible. What is that? I'm gonna go and check it out. I'm counting on this brand new 3D mapping technology to shine some new light on this dark and ancient mystery. This is by far the most incredible thing to me. This is a huge stone door to be rolled in. There's another door there, another one there. So you got three stone doors in a row. And, and the idea is under attack, this entire thing would be rolled in that direction, right? So that it literally blocked that tiny tunnel I just came down. But that's not all. Once that you've got this in place, the attackers can be attacked themselves from this space up here. This is where the soldiers are posted, literally looking down on that tunnel. This attack force that's come at you is all lined up in single file, getting spears thrust down at them from above in these holes, not to mention hot oil being poured down. Down here, on the other side of this, this stone, you can see where that spear would have been coming down. If you were on the attack and trying to move this thing, you boom, spear gets shoved right in your skull, right there. And so that's how this place remains defended for 60,000 people to live in a, in a protected bunker, essentially, for up to a year, depending on how much they, they'd stored down here. Each individual feature is impressive on its own. But when you examine the 3D map as a whole, it becomes crystal clear how advanced this construction really is. There are defensive tactics, ventilation systems, granaries, livestock pens. The place is a fortress. But who built it? I need to look closer at anything that may point to an ancient and apparently very advanced society who once occupied this area. Luckily, a new discovery 30 miles from here may do exactly that. Halil Sekerel is an archeologist who uncovered some ancient hieroglyphs back in 2019. I wanna know if there's anything in these hieroglyphs that may point to the creators of the underground cities. Left, please. Left here? OK. It's an amazing country that you can really see the old and the new so close together here, yeah, right? This is how it was always done. You can see it all around here. Each house, each field comes from really old times. And there is one stone barn. It is over there. Now we are going. Yes. We found a written hieroglyphs. This is the place? Up there? Yeah, this is the entrance. Hey, look at that. Oh, this is amazing. That's very old construction. And these are the scripts. Oh, yeah. It's a hieroglyph. Oh, you look see. at this. And all of this has all kinds of markings on look it. Look at here. There you go. Look at that one, beautiful. So this thing is a storybook. And these are all symbols. So this shows the mountain is big, mountain is strong, holy. 
After some sample testing from the organic materials in the, in the ground, the carbon date says this is 3,500 years ago. Wow. This shows the Hittites lived here 3,500 years ago. Okay, so this is, a, this is a Hittite wall. Yes, that's true. The Hittite Empire ruled this part of Turkey from 1700 BC to around 1200 BC. No one knows exactly how vast their empire was, but starting in 1275 BC, Ramses II, the Egyptian pharaoh, attacked with 20,000 men, attempting to wrest control of Hittite lands, rich with metals like silver and iron. So how did the Hittites defend themselves? Could they have used these subterranean structures both as a home and defense system against the Egyptians? It seems quite possible. Still, nothing has definitively pointed to the Hittites being the original builders of the 200 underground cities. Could these newly discovered hieroglyphics tell us something we didn't know? So what are they saying, do you know? Each symbol is one word or one, one name. And you, sh you see that it's shaped like a mountain. Yeah. All this Cappadocia was the Hittite land. Halil and his team interpret the mountain symbols as an indication that the Hittites were claiming ownership of the mountainous region of Cappadocia. But could they have built the underground cities? Were they advanced enough for such a feat of engineering? They were very well, you know, they were starter of the Iron Age. They were doing agriculture, they were doing the animal farming. First post organization, first water channels for the agriculture or even for the houses. So they are first for most of the things. They clearly had some advanced ideas and their empire reigned right in the middle of the Bronze Age, using metal tools to aid their advancements in building and agriculture. Maybe they are the original architects of the underground cities. It seems pretty clear to me. I mean, it's circumstantial evidence, but the Hittites were here, and they're the ones that had this capability and the need for it. That's the interesting thing to me. You have a, 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 an empire that sits on one of the most valuable regions in the world at that time. Everybody wanted this, this area. They would have had to defend it with their lives. Those underground cities must have been part of this. The network of up to 200 underground cities in central Turkey is immense. And the mystery of who built them is even bigger. I've seen evidence that suggests the cities could have been built by the Hittites, a Bronze Age people who lived in this region 3,500 years ago. They had the tools and the reason to build the tunnels. But did they? Researcher and author Andrew Collins has spent years searching for the answer to that question. My own interest in uh, Cappadocia um, really began in the 1980s. I was looking for the origins of civilization. Uh, and I thought, oh my God, I mean, yeah, these were these huge underground complexes on multiple levels of which almost nothing is known about. Well, what about the Hittites? You know, we know that the Hittites occupied the area of Cappadocia in the past. Mm -hmm. But the problem with these underground cities is that they were used by many successive cultures. You're suggesting that this would have happened over different civilizations. Absolutely. Wow. The general belief was that they could have been constructed by the Hittites. Mm -hmm. But the underground cities were clearly already there before the time of the Hittites. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Andrew's research suggests that the Hittites took advantage of underground cities that already existed. They didn't build them. He says, my timetable is off, and I mean way off. There was an archaeologist locally, Omar Demir, and he found whole extensive areas of rock chips that had very clearly come from one or more of the, the underground cities. This is rubble taken from the, the excavation of those cities, the digging of those cities, then transported out. Absolutely. Found in the Sorganli Valley, which is about 20 kilometers east of Cappadocia. Uh, and these were in exactly the same spot that he found a number of uh, late Paleolithic tools. 
hand axes, scrapers made of obsidian. When you say Paleolithic, you're speaking of the Stone Age. Yes, absolutely, yeah. What this showed was these underground cities could go back much, much older than the time of the Hittites, at least 11 to 12,000 years old. The term Stone Age refers to an immense time period, spanning the entire time that anything resembling a human used tools made of stone. So that's from about 2.6 million years ago up until 6,000 years ago, when humans finally invented something better, metal tools, which were much more effective. We know the Hittites exclusively used metal tools, so if what Andrew's saying is true, that would mean the 200 advanced and elaborate underground cities were entirely dug by stone tools, and almost 12,000 years ago. But that would be an insane development, because it would mean that the Cappadocian underworld was home to a civilization far more advanced than anything we thought existed that long ago. The understanding is that the more complex version of human civilization began about 6,000 years ago. Absolutely, yeah. You're talking about a society that predates that. That's correct, yeah. I think Cappadocia is the cradle of civilization. When scientists refer to the cradle of civilization, they're talking about the first humans to transition from nomadic hunter-gatherers to more advanced settlements that developed agriculture, the first writing systems, governments, complex tools, architecture, all of that which allowed them to create human society. Current thinking is that there's a handful of these cradles of civilization that developed separately in different areas of the world. But they all have a couple of things in common. Their advances happened during the Bronze Age when using metal tools, and they all happened no more than 6,000 years ago. So if Andrew's theory is right, and Cappadocia's underground cities were dug by an advanced civilization dating back 12,000 years into the Stone Age, it might be a whole new chapter in our understanding of human history. This makes me much more curious about the origins of Cappadocia. If it was Stone Age people who built these complex underground cities, could they have also been more advanced? A farming society that used a complicated system of architecture, government, tools. Is it possible that Cappadocia might be the oldest cradle of civilization in the world? I'm interested in checking this out even further. So I'm looking into an archeological site just 200 miles southeast of Cappadocia that many scientists believe is the oldest religious temple anywhere. So this is a 3D map of the Gobekli Tepe, all right? And this place was dated to 12,000 years ago. Gobekli Tepe was first discovered in 1994 by a German archeologist named Klaus Schmidt. He was investigating some stones on the top of a hill, which local farmers thought were grave markers for a medieval cemetery. But after doing some digging, quite literally, Schmidt realized that these stones were actually the tops of massive T-shaped limestone pillars. And when I say massive, I'm talking 10 tons massive. And scans revealed that the site could contain up to 200 of these pillars. But even more impressive than the size and scope of Gobek de Tepe is its age. Radiocarbon dating shows that the pillars are almost 12,000 years old, making them the oldest standing stone structures ever discovered to date. No one knows for sure who built them, but some archeologists theorize that nomadic tribes constructed Gobek de Tepe as a religious pilgrimage site. What's crazy about this is that this chapel on a hill was built almost 6,000 years before historians believed that sacred worship rituals and religious temples of this kind even existed. So if these people were so organized as to create something of this nature, then maybe the ancient peoples who created this may be the very ones who dug the underground cities. But to really find out, you gotta check it out yourself.
I've been looking into the amazing underground cities in Cappadocia, Turkey, and who might have created them. Were these cities possibly built with Stone Age tools 12,000 years ago? If so, it could potentially change the whole scientific timeline of the earliest cradles of human civilization. I'm now headed to check out Gobekli Tepe, an archeological site 200 miles to the southeast. Perhaps clues uncovered there can reveal some truth about the lost civilization of Cappadocia. I smell archaeology. I love the smell of history in the morning. While the secrets of Gobekli Tepe are still being unlocked, we do know the approximate time it was constructed. Archaeologists theorize that it was a religious pilgrimage site built by nomadic societies. But I'm wondering if Gobekli Tepe might somehow be connected to the subterranean cities of Cappadocia. Unbelievable, there it is. That is amazing to see. This is the oldest archeological site in the world. This is late Stone Age. Everything you're seeing here was made with a flint or a stone tool, and that's it. Now, let me be clear, I can't get down into this excavation. Nobody gets down in this excavation. This is the most precious piece of archeology span currently in the world today. It's very, very fragile. This is a religious site. This is not a village. People weren't living here. This is a strictly ceremonial, ritualistic site. And these are not just plain old pillars. There's an incredible amount of carving. What they represent is a big question mark. Look at that one over there. That one in particular just blows your mind. That's a 3D rendering of some kind of predator crawling down the side of that pillar. If Stone Age humans had enough skill to construct this elaborate temple, then it stands to reason they could also have dug the underground cities that housed hundreds of thousands in Cappadocia. Stone Age people are assumed to have been very primitive. It's a hunting and gathering society. They don't settle down. But what does this take? This takes a lot of planning, a lot of organization, a lot of work. Whoever made this was very sophisticated. Based on the vast scale of Gobekli Tepe and the use of stone tools to build it, it seems possible that a similar Stone Age culture could have built the underground cities of Cappadocia. And if Cappadocia and Gobekli Tepe are linked, this is a culture extending over 200 miles in central Turkey. A large society, socially advanced. Could this have been the original cradle of human civilization? Historically speaking, this is revolutionary. To see if this could be possible, I'm meeting with Dr. Martin Sweatman, a scientist at the University of Edinburgh, who's researched Gobekli Tepe's ancient ruins. You've done some incredible work at Gobekli Tepe. Can you explain it to me? Well, I mean, Gobekli Tepe is a, perhaps the world's first megalithic temple. On these pillars, there are these animal symbols and they seem to be telling some kind of story or encoding some kind of information. One of the pillars there has snakes that are sort of emanating from these, these animals. And of course, that doesn't really make much sense because snakes don't just naturally emanate from animals. But when we think of these animals as constellations, for instance, then we can easily interpret the snakes as meteors. So we think that most of the symbolism at Gobekli Tepe is all supporting this idea of, of a comet impact. That's amazing. And there is this event known as the Younger Dryas impact, creating a, a great catastrophe, which they think triggered kind of like a mini ice age. It began around 10,900 BC. It was about 1,300 years long. Temperatures plummeted very rapidly. That ice age transformed a land that looked like this into one that looked like this. And it all happened around 12,000 years ago, the same time that stone tools were commonly used by early man. 
Now that could be a coincidence, or it could be the motivation to dig underground cities to survive that thousand year winter. The mystery of Cappadocia's underground cities has confounded archaeologists for decades. Who built them and how old are they? We saw some clues at the archaeological site Gobekli Tepe that point to an advanced society that could be thousands of years older than when it was thought the first advanced civilizations were formed. I also met with Dr. Martin Sweatman, who theorized that the symbols on the pillars at this religious site tell of a catastrophic meteor that may have driven a large civilization into the Cappadocian underground to survive an impending ice age. So if that is true, then the symbols at Gobekli Tepe tell of this natural disaster that humans suffer from and survive. That's exactly what we think, yeah. It's like an eyewitness account of, of what happened, recorded on the stones. I'd like to take a closer look at the symbols on the structures at Gobekli Tepe to see if I can better understand Martin's theory. But going down into the dig site isn't an option. So I'm headed to the local Shanlurafa Museum, where they have an exhibit on the temple. This is a perfect uh, replica of the oldest, deepest layer of Gobekli Tepe. I'm standing in the center of what is a very arranged order here. Everything is equidistant from each other around the circle. An embodiment of the cosmos, an observatory. And each one of these pillars may have been a representation of a certain constellation. If you look closer, there are lines. The lines represent the comets coming to Earth. The story is told in these pillars. It goes something like this. The meteors strike, bringing an ice age. Then, things above ground get cold very, very cold. So a Stone Age society moves underground to escape the elements, then emerges after the Ice Age ends and memorializes their survival at Gobekli Tepe, the world's first temple. But the only way to find out if that theory makes sense is to find some hard evidence that the cities were dug with Stone Age tools, similar to the tools used to construct the pillars at Gobekli Tepe. To see what I can find, I'm headed to Derinkuyu, one of the least disturbed underground cities in Cappadocia, which might give us some insight into the techniques used to create this subterranean world. Somewhere in this village is one of many access points to this vast underground that is below this whole town. I mean, this is one of the largest of them all. While other cities have become popular tour destinations, Derinkuyu is less so. Merhaba. Can I come in? One access point to this 18-story underground city, once housing 20,000 people, has nothing to do with tourists. Look at this right in the laundry. That's it. That's the underground. That's really neat. Oh, that's amazing. It just goes from modern day right into an ancient tunnel system. Follow me down. Ah, it sort of opens up down here. This is awesome, unbelievable. Oh, wow, well, you can really see the markings, too. The markings of the tools that were used. Boy, it's really clear here. This is a good spot. I want to do this thing right here. This text should be able to help us understand what kind of tool was used and who made these tunnels to begin with. Once again, I'm breaking out the BLK 360. But this time, I'll use the photogrammetry settings. This will not only take ultra-detailed 3D scans of the tool marks, but also capture point cloud data, which will give us the exact shape and size of each marking. There we go. So that's all done. Let's see what we got. This is an extremely high-resolution image of all this space around me right here. And if I zoom in, 
I can see the markings. But to really understand them, we have to have something to compare it to. I have to render the ones deeper in the tunnel system, which presumably were made at a much later time. So let's pack up and climb down. If you're trying to figure out which architect designed a house, you don't just look at the entryway and call it a day. Let's go down. You gotta look at the whole building. This is really tight. Oh, man. I mean, Ant Hill is a fair comparison. It would have been deeper, of course, without the, the soil on the ground. Uh, all right. Oh, look at this. Look at this. This is typical down here in these underground cities all over the place. These gigantic stone doors, they would normally have wedged this into place until they needed to roll it. Something happened that rolled this out, uh, leaving us only this much space to get through. These stone doors weigh around 4,000 pounds each, and something dislodged this one, which is why it's here, <coughs> blocking our path to the deeper levels. All right, here goes nothing. So naturally, my instinct is to find a way past it so I can have a little fun deep in the underworld. I'm deep below the Cappadocia region of central Turkey in the underground city of Derinkuyu, somewhere between a rock and a hard place. No one ever said that searching for the origins of an ancient civilization was supposed to be easy. All right. Give me that backpack. But now that I'm through that, I can get back to the task at hand, scanning the walls with this new photogrammetry technology, so we can try to figure out what kind of tools were used to dig out this place. Oh, this is good. If dug by stone tools, it might show that the cities were made by a Stone Age culture to survive a devastating ice age 12,000 years ago. Which raises the question, could this have been the oldest advanced civilization in the world? I don't know what I'm looking at. I have to send this data to archaeologists, and they can look at these markings. They can analyze whether or not they were made by stone or metal, Stone Age people or Iron Age people and I've tracked down the perfect team to help me. Met and Michelle, how you doing? Good. Met and Aaron and Michelle Beber are archaeologists at Kent State. Met and specializes in stone tools, Michelle in iron. Well, we had a close look at these scans. We've got the upper levels right here and, and the lower levels right here. Okay. The upper level is actually the oldest, and as you go down, you get more recent in time. Right. Because the level closest to the surface would be the first one you dig, and then as time goes by, you continue down from there. Yes. So because of that, these upper levels are very old. Just looking at these scans, you can see that the walls are very smooth. They're very eroded from people living here for thousands of years. Interesting. One of the pictures, there's a niche in the wall, and that's kind of been more preserved compared to the area that's getting a lot of human activity. So can you see in that niche, up close, any evidence that tells you that this was a Stone Age tool that was cutting out these walls? It's hard to say definitively, but if we were to compare it to the scans from the lower level, I would say the upper level, this is more likely to be some sort of stone chopping tool, simply because you can see the marks are slightly more, I guess I would say blunt. They're not as sharp as these marks from the lower level. How interesting, yeah. yeah. So it's definitely possible. Michelle's observations confirm that markings on the upper level of the city are consistent with blunt stone tools, especially when compared with the crisper marks on the lower levels. This supports our theory that the cities could have been dug by an ancient unknown civilization, trying to escape a sudden ice age. Can you show me what you think a Stone Age tool that would have been used 
to make those uh, underground cities looks like. Yeah, you can actually chip out uh, axes or adzes and then grind them smooth. Yeah. And then if you imagine that uh, an adze or an axe like this would be hafted onto a handle, mm -hmm. you would then easily just chop through so the idea that Stone Age people would be creating architecture is not outside the realm of possibility. That's amazing. So the possibility definitely exists, which is good enough for me to, to open the idea up. Thank you very much. While it's not definitive, the belief that the underground cities of Cappadocia may have been dug out with stone tools supports the idea that around 12,000 years ago, an advanced civilization lived in the Cappadocian underworld. When those meteors struck, people took shelter in the underground. We still don't know the identity of the mysterious culture that excavated the underground cities of Cappadocia. I think Cappadocia is the cradle of civilization. But some clues that we've uncovered point to an incredibly old and remarkably advanced people who used sophisticated tools and technology far beyond what we believe possible during that stage of human development. There's a pretty grand design to this deal. They would have been sophisticated enough to survive a catastrophic meteor strike and subsequent ice age. It's incredible. And then develop a system of writing to document it all. The survivors of this ice age create Gobekli Tepe carve these stones telling this story, recounting the record of how, against the odds, mankind survived. This would demonstrate that the earliest cradle of human civilization sprung up 12,000 years ago, and clues to their existence are hidden deep in the Cappadocian underworld.